This is Scott Vanderplu, and you're listening to the Artist Edition Index Podcast, episode 34. Thank you for joining me for where we discuss all things AE. I am Scott Vanderplum, and as I said, and we are going to discuss everything that has occurred at the Artist Edition Index, AEindex.org, over the past 30 days of September. I am recording this. I'm on a trip, actually, so I'm recording this in a hotel. It's a bit different, so different equipment and everything. I brought my microphone with me, but that was about it. So we'll see how it goes. Um, the Artist Edition Index can be found at AEindex.org. And it can be found on social media on the Facebook uh, slash Artist Edition Index and on the Twitter at A Index. I'm also on YouTube. I'm putting this podcast on YouTube and I'm start going to start my video series as well shortly. But we'll discuss that in a moment. All right. Topic of the month is something that I found last month that I found disturbing that continues on and I get no answers. And that is... Dark Horse solicited a Nexus newspaper strip, volume one, and it's called The Coming of Gourmando Artist Edition. So I put that blurb up there and I give you, uh, if you go on the website, I give you a little bit of history of the Artist Edition and X uh, of the Artist Edition name. First spring in 2010 with um, Dave Stevens' The Rocketeer Artist Edition. Then 2011, Walter Simonson's The Mighty Thor Artist Edition. And then 2012, things start picking up, and we see other publishers coming into the game, and we see IDW really in increasing the output. And we have had names, uh, the format name, used by very different companies. Uh, Graffiti Designs and Dark Horse both used gallery editions since 2014. But mostly people came up with their own name. And then we have this artist edition. So I contacted uh, Dark Horse's uh, Public Relations and uh, I wrote, uh, I see this volume as being labeled artist edition, which has been used by IDW with Dark Horse using the term gallery edition until this point. Is Dark Horse moving away from the term gallery edition? Will this volume consist of scans of the original art at their full size? I would love a chance to discuss this book with its editor if the opportunity presents. Dark Horse replied, thanks for reaching out. I'll need to double check with the editor to determine why the naming convention for this title is artist edition versus gallery edition. In general, Dark Horse isn't moving away from the term gallery edition. Let me check with the editor about a potential conversation for you. I emailed, then emailed again. So this is a month later, and I asked what's going on. And my, the response I received was, I think the editor is going to pass on this interview opportunity. Now, this is something that drives me crazy when you ask an email, and I find this a lot. You ask multiple questions, and the person answers one question and ignores the rest. So my first question was, Art edition, not gallery edition. Second question was, will this volume consist of scans of the original art at their full size? So that got glossed over. And then uh, apparently the editor gave me a pass. All right, great. Nobody wants to discuss this until the work's closer? Fine. Then I reached out to Steve Rood for information. I believe it's his wife who runs his site, and they do a lot of online business. So I asked the same question. Is this scans of the art at full size? And I did not get a response either. Uh, it was discussed in their newsletter that they received multiple queries, but they didn't actually give any more information. So I don't know what's happening with this. I don't know anything about it. Is this just a giant book at 12 by 17 size of the same thing that the trade paperback will see at, you know, 8 inch? I don't know. It's scheduled for February, so we will wait until that point. Um... I do receive um, digital copies of Dark Horse books for uh, preview and um, editorial review. So I'll see when that comes out, probably in January. And then well, I guess we'll have a better look. But as I, as I finish the post, um, it seems poor form to use um, Artist Edition when you've got, you've been using Gallery Edition and... Uh, you know, unless it's, I don't, I don't know, is this not a Dark Horse editor? Like, I, the whole thing just seems, 
highly bizarre and aggravating. So let's see. I think Artist Edition, you know, regardless of the volume, when you say Artist Edition, most people know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, that's a book with scans of the original art at the original si at their full size. So yay for IDW for defining the format and um, putting out 70 plus books. And uh, I think everybody was better off sticking to their own name. I really do. All right, moving on. Let's talk about shipping changes. It's been quite a few this month. We had a bit of excitement there. The uh, John Burns Marvel Classics Artifact Edition was scheduled for the 9th of October. Then it moved to the 2nd of October. Now it's back to the 9th of October, so that's okay. Frank Thorne's Gita and Erotic Treasury Archival Edition Volume 2. Apparently that's at the print. That it's come from the printers. It's at a Hermes Press, and now they're giving an October 9th date as well. So we could have two AE format books on the same date. Other changes, original art, Daniel Klaus, Fantagraphic Studio Edition is December 4th. And unfortunately, Ed Pisker, the Fantagraphic Studio Edition has moved to January 22nd. And the Star Wars Artisan Edition has moved to January 29th. So we had a couple big moves there, which is always disappointing. But uh, I think it's nice that we're going to get two books in October. And hopefully one in November and one in December. And we'll see how, the, how it rolls. Maybe two in December. We'll have to see where P. Craig Russell's The Selfless Giant and Other Stories Finer Edition shakes itself out in the schedule. All right. Let's talk about solicitations. Two AE format books solicited. First one up. Dave Cockrum's X-Men Artifact Edition. This, this has been discussed previously by IDW. I think it was WonderCon. San Diego. One of the two. No, San Diego. But now it's listed and we got a shipping date. So let me give you the blurb. By 1975, the X-Men had been relegated to reprint status for a number of years. Or is that status? And the title was not a safe bet to become one of the most popular comic book franchises of all time. But with the launch that year of Giant Size X-Men number one by Len Wein, Wein, never sure of that either, and Dave Cockrum, that is precisely what happened. Dave Cockrum was the artist and architect of this newly revamped team, and he co-created Storm, Colossus, and perhaps most notably, Nightcrawler. After the runaway success of Giant Size X-Men number one, the title began producing all new stories with X-Men 94, and the rest is the stuff comic book dreams are made of. This artifact edition contains more than 100 pages from Cockrum's initial run on X-Men, as well as some pages when the artist returned later for a second run on the characters several years later. As with all artist edition style books from IDW Publishing, which have so far won six Eisner Awards, I always appreciate that IDW slips that into every solicitation. The pages printed here were all scanned from Cockrum's actual original art and are printed at the same size they were drawn, mimicking the look and feel of the artist's hand-drawn work. As an added bonus, there is a gallery section featuring covers, sketches, and a few surprises. This is an art book made for fans of Dave Cockrum's X-Men art. Hmm... Solicited for March 25th, 2020, 12 by 17, 144 pages, $125. Lots of standardized uh, things there. IDW's, you know, standard 144. And, of course, 12 by 17 goes for 125 US. That's awesome. And uh, second solicitation was uh, what I discussed a few moments ago about my angry litany there nexus the newspaper strips volume one the coming of gormando artists edition something long dormant beneath the surface of Yulum comes alive triggering a visit from the planet devouring gormando and his mysterious ally with powers far beyond those of even nexus himself this unstoppable being banishes nexus to an unknown realm and the only way out is to face one's worst fears mike baron and steve rude deliver a new nexus adventure in the special collection that also includes the newly remastered Nexus the Origin comic and the classic rude hand-painted Sundra story when she was young. Solicited for February 19th, 2020, 12 by 17 inches, 184 pages, 99 US. Good pricing there. And uh, as I like to do on the solicitation pages, I've got the page from the previous catalog as well. So pop on there, you get to see a couple pages of... Uh, Cocker Mart's going to be in the book. No uh, art included in the Nexus solicitation. 
just a great big mystery. There is this blurb though at 12 by inches by 17 inches. This full color hand hardcover is reproduced in the lavish artist edition format. That's all we get as far as what the deal is. Otherwise, there's a 7 by 10 trade of this same material for 20 bucks. So we really, same page count and everything. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Waiting and seeing. That's, well, as I tell my children. All right. Sales numbers. Exciting because we actually have some new book sales numbers this month. One book came out in August 2019. And that was Walter Simons in Star Wars Artist Edition. According to the Diamond Sales Chart of 500... This came in at number 236, selling 376 copies in its initial month. So it hit the charts. Very nice. All right. Let's look at out-of-print sales for August 2019. All right. As always, these are, uh, if it's gone out of print or not available from Diamond and then it came back, I just leave it on the chart. And I chart it every month. I check out the eBay sales, and uh, that's the links always available. So click on the link and uh, of the price, and you'll see you'll go right to eBay if you want to pick this up. All right, three copies of Alien, the illustrated story, the original art edition sold for an average of 69 65 so a little undercover. Two copies of Bernie Wrights and Artifact Edition first print sold, 124.13 average. Two copies of Bill Sienkiewicz's Mutants and Moon Knights and Assassin's Artifact Edition for an average of two hundred four fifty. This book is moving. I am it, popularity. Of this is so hot. I'm really surprised we're not seeing an artisan edition of this a little sooner. All right, one copy of David Stevens' Rock Terrorist Edition, first print, one fifteen. Uh, two copies of David Mazzuchelli's Daredevil Born Again Artist Edition for an average of two fifty five. One copy of Don Rose's The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck, Volume 1, Artist Edition, for $69.99. Good deal there. One copy of Gene Colan's Tomb of Dracula, Artist Edition, for $87.66. One copy of Go Kane's The Amazing Spider-Man, Artist Edition, for $78. Three copies of Jack Davis's EC Stories, Artist Edition, averaging $105.75. Hmm. Two copies of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four, The World's Greatest Artist Edition, averaging $144.50. So a little undercover there as well. One copy, Jack Kirby's Marvel Heroes and Monsters Artist Edition, 110. Wow. Undercover again. Two copies, Jim Lee Legends Artifact Edition, 113.48 average. Two copies of Joe Kubert's, or is it Kubert? Tarzan of the Apes Artist Edition, 57.46 average. Two copies of John Buscema's Silver Surfer Artist Edition for 109.99 average, a little over cover. Two copies of John Burns' Fantastic Four Artist Edition, 135 average. Four copies of John Burns' X-Men Artifact Edition, averaging 175. Yowzers, what is going on there? Two copies, John Romita's The Amazing Spider-Man Artist Edition, 130 average. One copy of Marvel Covers Artist Edition, first print, $150. One copy of P. Craig Russell's Strange Dreams Artist Edition, $69.99 on average. I don't know why that book is not more popular. It went out of, uh, unavailable from IDW really fast. And then it just, I barely see any back issue sales on that. One copy, Ross Andrews, The Amazing Spider-Man Artist Edition. It's $58. Three copies of Spawn Vault Edition, averaging three eighteen sixty seven. Ouch. Now, there's a book uh, not available anymore. I think it uh, possibly hot popularity because Spawn Vault Edition 2 came out this month. But, uh, wow, that's, a, that's quite a premium. Maybe it's because people are reading that it's signed and they may win an artwork. Maybe they don't realize that every copy is signed. Hmm. Four copies of Stranko Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Artist Edition, averaging one sixteen twenty five. Good price there. Two copies of Wally Woods EC Stories Artist Edition, first print, one seventy one average. One copy of Walter Simonson's The Mighty Thor Artist Edition, $75. Oof, bargain. One copy of Will Eisner's The Spirit Artist Edition, $99. Oh, man, that is a book. Gorgeous. All righty. Um, two releases this month. Spawn Vault Edition, two. And David Mazzuchelli's Daredevil Born Again Artisan Edition. Uh, I would like to speak briefly on that Artisan, Artisan Edition because I have not reviewed it on the site. I'm not sure if I will. My um, 
local comic shop. Got a copy in, and it had a ding on the corner. So they, they normally... Uh, so I may get that on a discount later. I'm waiting to see what happens. Maybe wait a couple weeks. I may review it. Uh, I, I have wanted an artisan edition for a while just to see what it's like. It's got the it's got the soft cover and it's eight by twelve, but it's got the French uh, soft cover with the the quite large flap on it. So nice stiff cardboard. Very much if you uh, if you're getting any of the Corto Maltese soft covers, I believe it's the same. And uh, good value. I mean, I'm wondering if it's going to lower the artist edition price any, or will that just um, increase demand for the artist edition? Uh, I understand, I mean, you know, if you didn't want to spend the money for the artist edition, which is, you know, selling consistently over $200 now, um, you may pick this up, but I think I'm not sure the market, if that's exclusive or if someone will get the artist edition and go, yes, this is awesome. Uh, I want the uh, artist edition. Well, we'll see. All right. Now's the time when I give the blurb. Uh, you can support the Artist Edition Index uh, th- in three different ways. One, you can become a Patreon patron, which is greatly appreciated, and you can you can commit any amount you'd like. The minimum commitment is a dollar, but you can put in any amount you want. If you'd like to sp- commit to three or five or ten dollars or a million, all those would be greatly appreciated. That uh, Second way you can support the Artist Edition Index is through um, purchasing your books through the links. Pretty well, I've got affiliate links everywhere you go. If you look in the index proper there, I've got purchase links, things from another world or uh, Forbidden Planet or Amazon or all those things. Uh, I've got them in the reviews. I've got them in the solicitations. They're kind of everywhere. So if you have, if you like, uh, one of these Reese's Allers and you'd like to purchase that, that gets me away uh, a few dollars here and there as well. And the third way is uh, I have set up PayPal me. So that's on the artist edition index page as well. You can uh, go there and just sort of give a one off. So three options, purchase your books from my affiliate links. You get the book. I get a few dollars support me through Patreon patron. That is a, a nice bump for me. That's a consistent uh, monthly income. Or just a, as if you want to give a one-time, hey, thanks for what you do, then the PayPal will pay me. Uh, wonderful. I greatly appreciated that support. All right. Thanks for listening to that. I did want to talk briefly about the website. Uh, I had, uh, for those Patreon patrons or those who just watched my Patreon page, uh, I had hit the $50 mark. And uh, when I did that, I said I would start videos. So I tried to do video, and it just didn't quite work. I needed some. I need some additional lighting. You may have noticed in some of my um, review images that I get a, a little bit of a shadow here and there. So I saw a nice LED lights. So they're small. Um, they've they come with stands. I saw them on Amazon. Uh, then they weren't available on Amazon. Then they were back available, and then they were gone. when I went back to buy them, they were available again. So I've ordered them, and they've arrived at my house. I had a quick look at them. That looks like they're going to do what I want to do. Now I just got to get the videos going. I think I talked about this before. I'm going to start with uh, music and uh, just flipping every page. I'm not sure if I want to go the video review route where I am basically um, discussing the book again, reiterating what's in the written review and stopping and pausing. I gotta, I'll have to think about that. I'm going to start with the video walkthrough, which is... Um, just an ad to my review. Not an ad as an advertisement, but a value add to the review. And I want to be putting those on YouTube because that's my third social media channel now. I've started putting the, this podcast on YouTube. I see there's some listens. I think it's 14. And uh, it's appreciated. Uh, one more one more avenue, right? One more venue to uh, showcase. All right. That's what's new and what's happening. One other change I should mention. There's a uh, we have a monthly poll and uh, gratefully supplied, uh, the questions are supplied by um, David Jacoy, which is always thanks, David. That's, uh, uh, he also gives me the links to Heritage, which I appreciate. And sometimes I change the images up, but not a lot. And uh, so then I pull those images, get them, uh, image, edit them up from Heritage. 
And we put the questions up. This month's was, in the modern age, DC Comics has produced some of the most iconic comics by the best artists and writers in the industry. Which deserve to be collected in the A format? Which DC modern classic deserves the A treatment? I just noticed a spelling mistake. Man alive, that drives me crazy. You know, when you're the only guy running uh, something, you got to watch the spelling mistakes all the time. Chief Cook, Bottle Washer. And I always seem to catch them <laughs> as I'm doing this podcast. You know, you you can't write something and then edit it. You've got to write it, wait a day, go back, edit it. That's the only way. You, you need that break. All right. Let's look at the voting for this month. So, Catwoman, When in Rome by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, 16 votes. Cosmic Odyssey by Jim Starlin and Mike Mignola, 15 votes. That's what I voted for. Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross, the obvious choice, 28 votes. Starman by James Robinson and Tony Harris, 10 votes. Suicide Squad by John Ostrander and Luke McDonald, amongst others, one vote. Somebody just thought, what? That poor underdog. I need to give them a vote. Uh, I have seen the, I mean, Cosmic Odyssey, first off, is awesome. I just, I think that's a, a spectacular series. I, uh, I have a series of the, uh, painted pages. Uh, the colors were done separately and painted with, uh, um, the inked work overlay. They're gorgeous. I think I'm about nine of them. Uh, I just, I just love the Cosmic, Cosmic Odyssey. That, that, I, uh, I, I mean, I, I like Mignola. I like his Hellboy. I really enjoy it, but I like that, just that, just that period pre-Hellboy. When everything wasn't quite so square, there was still some round, but his uh, his style had mostly evolved to what it is now. That is that to me is that's gorgeous, Mignola. All right, um, that's the poll. And the other thing about the poll is I realized um, I don't need to close the poll. I, re- I think I talked about this last month, and forgive me for uh, rehashing. But yeah, there's no reason ever to close a poll. It's better, apparently, just to keep them running and whoever wants to come by later and maybe add a vote, you know, six months in, two years in, just go ahead. So I've used a couple different products on the site for polls. And uh, the latest one now is the one I think I'm going to stick with. I like the bar charts. I'm not crazy about the color choices for the bar charts, but so far I haven't been able to figure out how to change the colors of the bars. So I have to see if that's possible. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's talk about this month's one AE format book that was released. Yes, I'm. Our, we already said the other, the Arizona edition, but. I really don't include the artist editions in the AE format as, as I use it on the AE index website because I'm talking about art at its full size or as best as can be. Um, some things, you know, like Prince Valiant, I mean, the, the artwork is ginormous. You can't possibly do a book full size. And I understand that. So that's why I still include that in the AE format. But artist editions, um, especially on the reprints, you know, we've, we had the artist edition of Mazzuccelli and now we have the uh, artist, so it's a reason. Anyways, you get where I'm going there. All right, the blurb for Todd McFarlane, Spawn, Vault Edition 2. Todd McFarlane has once again opened his personal vault to showcase Spawn 8 to 15 in their original art board form. This new oversized Spawn Vault Edition art board book will include never before published original art boards. I'm getting art board. Plus, a few extra surprises from series creator Todd McFarlane, including the chance of a one of a kind sketch by McFarlane himself which we inserted into randomly selected books. Collect Spawn 815. That's a reiteration there. All right, September 4th, 2019 release date by Image Comics. 12 inches by 17 inches. 208 pages. $175. Um, you know, I got this book, and I saw the cover, which, interestingly, this is, I think, McFarlane Productions slash Image. I mean, really, it's, I think it's just McFarlane Productions. I don't believe. I mean, Image is... Uh, soliciting. I don't know how much more they're involved with, but you see the sticker and it's like, hey, every one of these is signed. I'm trying to get to the image, but because I got lazy low on it, doesn't show. All right. It says, free! Tom McFarland signature in every copy. One 100 include a McFarland sketch. So, solicited no mention of the signature. And I thought, oh, maybe was that a volume one kind of thing? And they just, you know, we're not going to do it anymore. And I believe the print run was 1500 on this again. So, we got 15 original sketches. 
and the signature and everyone. So this time around, he signed in blue. On the first volume, he signed in red. A nice signature page. Uh, McFarlane doing his best. Um, uh, Frank Miller, actually, on that image. And, uh, yeah, the book, man, I have never seen a book follow the design this closely. Uh, the entire design is just like the first volume. I mean, down to how the, you know, the the colophon page and the table of contents page is laid out. It's just, um, even the, like the forward and everything, it's, it's crazy how they've just followed the exact same format. And, I mean, if, hey, if it ain't broke, uh, you know, why fix it? Um, scans are great. There's a really good quality production on this book. Great, uh... And great to see as it is. Uh, I'm not going to comment on the material. If you were around back then, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of, uh, I really enjoy the, the uh, heavy inks, uh, pages of a lot of ink. I'm, I'm always a big fan of ink. Uh, and uh, some interesting stuff here. You got uh, Dave Sim writing an issue. You got uh, Frank Miller writing an issue. You got Neil Gaiman. Uh, yeah, so. No real margin notes other than to the colorist. McFarlane was inking and penciling and inking, so, but he liked to let the colorists know what was going on, which is awesome. I mean, why not? Uh, I'm just flipping through my images. Lots of great images. A lot of images in the review, yeah. Hmm. Great looking book. Go online. Have a look at all my pictures. Get an idea of what I'm talking about. If you're a fan of Spawn, if you're a fan of Todd McFarlane, if you're a child or a comic collector, reader from that period, this really brings the nostalgia home. And seeing the original artwork is quite nice. McFarlane had something going there right at the top of his game. All right, that's that's my review for this month. Um, uh, as an aside, not but not really, I had a chance. I... Uh, reached out now I had reached out to Bob Chapman head of graffiti designs and he replied back to me I had reached out to him in 2017 but did not get a reply and uh, somehow that dissuaded me from reaching out to him again but there was a lot of talk on the ye old forums there about uh, oh Scott Dunbeer had said that uh, DC was not letting anybody do um, AE format books and that was taken as gospel and I was there was a bit of I was bit of uh, dissension there on the forum because I said, well, that's, you know, that's IDW's deal, but that's, you can't speak for anybody else in the industry. So I reached out to Korea Designs and Bob Chapman said, yes, they're, uh, the 2019 book is almost done. They've slowed down. Uh, the 2019 book is going to be out. Obviously that's the Sandman Overture, uh, J.H. Williams III, and that's going to be out before the end of the year. It's currently solicited for November 6th, but maybe we'll see if that slips at all. And he told me what the 2020 book is, and uh, I'm not going to tell you on the podcast. I'm actually going to do a post for my Patreon patrons and give them the info from Bob Chapman. It's pretty exciting. It's uh, I'll give a hint. It's been mentioned before. And he, I asked about uh, Batman Year One, right? And he didn't have anything definitive, but he had some info again that I'll be sharing with my Patreon patrons. So if you'd like to be in the know, then please sign up. All right, that's it for this month. I'm going to look at my old time clock here. Oh, I'm pretty close to my 30 minutes. That's good. I think sometimes I go a little over, sometimes a little under. Let me just stress again that um, all the things we've talked about are available at the Artist Edition Index, aeindex.org. And you can follow us on Facebook slash Artist Edition Index and on Twitter at aeindex. As well, you can follow me on YouTube. I've got the link on the site. You got to get, I don't know how many, you got to get 100 followers or subscribers on YouTube, be able to change your URL. I'm not there. So I don't know how long that's going to take. I'm hoping it will happen eventually. But until it does, go to eindex.org and you'll get the link for the YouTube there. So you can you can get the podcast. And as I said, uh, look for videos to start popping up in October. They will be video walkthroughs of books I've already reviewed since I reviewed every book. And they'll be appearing at the bottom of my reviews and they'll be on YouTube and I will be giving a blurb and a link on the video to please go and see the full review on the site. All right, thank you for joining me once again for taking the written word and bringing it to life. We will talk again next month. <laughs>